I would define the United States' performance at the World Cup in Qatar as success, and manager Greg Berhalter deserves credit for managing an energetic, assertive, well-organized team that played all four of its matches extremely hard. But is that alone worthy of giving Berhalter another World Cup opportunity, particularly as the host country? Or can the United States do better? Find out next, here on Pints and Punditry. Just mentioning Greg Berhalter's name brings a certain level of polarity to any discussion, even by the already volatile standards of general football conversation. There's almost a vile tone to most who discuss him, with very few American supporters rising to his defense. And I've been guilty of this too, spouting negativity towards the American manager for a number of different reasons over the years, most of which I still stand by. I'm frustrated by, and I'll discuss them here briefly today. But American soccer fans are likely to be let down in the near future as reports are beginning to surface that United States soccer is in negotiations with Berhalter on a contract extension that would see him remain at the helm of the U.S. national team into the next World Cup cycle. Now, details have not yet been released and perhaps they don't even exist yet. It does appear to be very early in these conversations. So there's no guarantee that this means Berhalter is definitely still going to be the U.S. men's national team head coach in 2026 when the United States plays joint host along with Canada and Mexico. But it does signal that the organization, that U.S. soccer, believes Berhalter is doing a good job and that he did a good job in Qatar and that he should continue to lead the program until he proves otherwise. And, uh, you know, while many, including myself, believe that he's already proven otherwise time and time again, U.S. soccer appears to believe differently. And their argument is not empty. Berhalter does deserve some credit for his accomplishments with this team. There are some arguments to be made for keeping Greg Berhalter around. While most of his critics attack his on-field strategy with X's and O's, and rightly so, stay tuned, he receives little to no criticism of the way he handles the players themselves or the way he manages the locker room. The players all seem to universally love Berhalter. They played their absolute asses off for four games in Qatar. And while it may seem like a given that that happened, it's really anything but. There are always egos involved, but the United States had zero, which is a testament both to the individuals on the team, and there are a lot of good guys on that team, but credit absolutely is due to the man that manages that team. Berhalter also appears to have very little interest in his own ego or in making the team's accomplishments about himself, for which he also deserves credit. In fact, outside of the silly bounce pass thing, which is actually kind of funny, and his affinity for cool sneakers on the sidelines, which I personally like, he appears to have almost no personality to speak of whatsoever, at least that he wants to portray to the media. And in the world of big-time football managers, that's actually quite refreshing. So it's really necessary that we give him credit for the way he handled this team. Berhalter also produced an incredibly disciplined, well-organized team on the pitch. Since we're going to pile on his strategy here in a little bit, we have to give credit where it's due as well. His strategy shortcomings fall largely on the attacking end of the pitch, but the United States played phenomenally on the defensive end until some breakdowns against the Netherlands, and they did so with their best defender from qualifying, Walker Zimmerman, really turning in a subpar individual performance that I don't think you can blame on Berhalter. The team itself played incredibly hard, stayed organized on defense, kept its shape well, and with the exception of losing track of two Dutch players in the round of 16 game, they marked their men incredibly well during the tournament. Berhalter deserves tremendous credit for taking an incredibly young, inexperienced team of players and having them incredibly prepared to play their best on the biggest stage in the world. That's not nothing when it comes to coaching and it's easily overlooked, but it's also not enough. Just having the team well prepared and playing hard with no egos or distractions is great. Not every manager in the World Cup can say they accomplished those things. But that's not going to be enough to win the United States a World Cup, not when there are more talented teams in the tournament. The United States wasn't winning this World Cup no matter what Greg Berhalter did. That was a given and that's something fans just need to accept. But they could actually contend in 2026, and that's a reality we need to prepare for. 
but they're only going to contend in 2026 if they get the most out of their best talent, and that's the biggest knock against Greg Berhalter. Despite actually having prodigious attacking talent on the squad, even when compared to the rest of the world's stage, the United States has underperformed offensively for the entirety of Greg Berhalter's tenure, and there's absolutely no reason to believe that that's going to change. Berhalter's biggest fault as a coach, particularly as a national team coach, is his complete and utter insistence in inserting the players available to him into his system of play and his style of play, rather than adjusting what the team is trying to do based on the talent on the roster. What this U.S. men's national team roster has is pace, particularly on the wing. Christian Pulisic and Tim Weah are both elite in this category, even on the world stage. Yunus Musa has an elite skill of producing attacking dribbles in the middle of the pitch into the attacking third. Brendan Aronson is a pest who is great in tight spaces and fantastic at absorbing contact for fouls. All of these skills add up to counter-attacking football, trying to get out on the break and run. Instead, Greg Berhalter insists on playing possession football, setting up an organized attack in the final third and using creative passes, overlapped wingers, and short runs in an attempt to create opportunities. The problem is the United States are incredibly short on creative, technically gifted attacking footballers. The only player on the roster that fits that style of play is Giovanni Reina, who for some reason was anchored to the bench for most of the tournament. This team led the World Cup group stages in crosses by some margin, but left off the United States striker most capable of finishing crosses in the box. That's Jordan Pifok, because he didn't fit Berhalter's high-pressing style. The entire offensive strategy, design, and execution was just simply a mess. This team has attacking talent. In fact, I would argue that their attacking talent is better currently and deeper than their defensive talent, yet that's where they struggled. And it's purely 100% because of the design of Greg Berhalter's scheme. There's not one thing the U.S. tried to do offensively that fits the skill sets of their best players. Therefore, they underachieved as a unit despite some impressive individual performances in the games. The end result is lots of possession, but very few shots on goal that have any potential of going in. If we had any thought that Burhalter had any intention of adapting his strategy to the talent around him, then he would be the man for the job. He does well enough at the other aspects of coaching. But if that were the case, it should have already been done, and he has shown no willingness to change his style. It's the talent on the pitch that is going to give the United States a chance in 2026, and they need a coach who can get the most out of them, not limit their abilities within the confines of a system that the coach thinks looks pretty. Because of this, Greg Berhalter should not be the man to continue to take the United States further. He deserves credit for what he's accomplished to date, but it feels like he's reached the limits of what his system and his unbending adherence to it can take this squad, and his leadership will continue to hold back what should otherwise be an exciting attacking team. That'll do it for this edition of Pints and Punditry. Thanks as always for joining us here on Total FIFA Career Mode.